Hello world, this is live from CUNY headquarters in Taipei, Taiwan. I'm Michael, a product, product marketing specialist, and here I have Jason with us again. Hi, I'm Jason. Uh, I'm a product manager from CUNY. It's almost like a tradition that Jason will be with us every Monday, right? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to our topics. Uh, this morning in Taipei, CUNY have finally released our brand new flagship model of TS 453 BT3 and some of you may already guess what it is by the model name but Jason can you tell us about the product highlights? Uh, sure, uh, let's switch to a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so today I'm bringing you the uh, brand new TS 453 BT3. It's a 4 bay NAS with uh, Thunderbolt 3 with 10 gigabit connection and uh, with uh, two M.2 SSD SATA slots. So basically with everything you can get at this uh, uh, small business uh, level. It comes with four bay and quad core processor and eight gigabyte memory. Very good. It almost can buy and add anything you you want in the yes. model. Yeah. So uh, in, uh, why do you want to look for NAS uh, like this one? Um, okay. There's uh, some of the uh, devices that you may already have that can work perfectly with the NAS. For example, on the if you look at a presentation file on the left hand side. Uh, these are the Apple MacBook Pro and iMac. These are already the new generations already come with uh, Thunderbolt 3, the latest technology with the offers high band bandwidth. Okay, and uh, if you are on the PC side, uh, on the, the Microsoft Plus the PC, uh, I think there are already, according to official statistics, there are already um, over 100 devices, including from laptops, desktops, and uh, motherboards. So, if you don't, those are Thunderbolt 3. If you it's just uh, for the Mac and PCs, but uh, what if 10 gigabit? 10 gigabit use. If you look at, at the slide here on the right hand side, uh, some uh, brand, some uh, PC makers they already released uh, affordable one port 10 G based T card. That's only 100 US dollars. So you just need to spend 100 US dollars to quickly upgrade your PC and you get high speed performance. So what if you have all these uh, great technologies? How can you take advantage of this high speed? then it's time to upgrade your NAS to this TS453 BT3. So TS453 BT3, we define as your first affordable NAS for video editing and backup. So this one comes with uh, currently with one SKU. So it's TS-453 BT3-8 g And basically it's a four bay 3.5 inch supported uh, NAS and uh, with an eight gigabyte version and it comes in dual channel. Here you can see on the left hand side uh, we should be in the dual channel configuration. So you have a two of the four gigabyte memory. And uh, we also equipped it with the high speed DDR3 at 1866. So the performance, uh, it has some performance gain from that compared to a traditional DDR3 at 1600. And uh, on the right hand side, the CPU, what about the CPU? Uh, it comes with the latest power efficient Intel quad core J3455 uh, processor. And uh, the code name is called Apollo Lake processor. It's an all-in-one SOC. And uh, the frequency is uh, quad-core 1.5 gigahertz, but it can burst to uh, 2.3 automatically based on the system, the, the loading requirement. And now if you look at the computer products, some of the, the product products may just stop here, you know, just basic uh, hard uh, quad-core 4 bay, 5 bay, and then with uh, not much else, okay? But with this uh, TS453 BD3, we give you lots more, a lot more, okay? Uh, first of all, Thunderbolt 3, 10 g base T, okay, high-speed connection, and uh, M.2 SSD slots. And uh, also, we give you a free IR remote control, and uh, it's got dual HDMI outputs that are capable of 4K output, and also HDMI certified. So it is uh, guaranteed to be compatible with your existing uh, monitors or TVs in your home or you know, in the office. And plus, so with uh, the QNAP is unique QVPC technology, if you, you can, if you have a spare USB keyboard and mouse, you can just connect them to this device, to this NAS TS453 BT3 and uh, install a Windows virtual machine. Then you can turn this combination into your personal PC and use them just like a PC with HDMI monitor, with keyboard mouse, and then run your typical office applications. 
-hmm. Well, that's really a lot of advantage in just you know, this tiny, small one, but mighty machine. So yes. we have it right here. Jason, can you walk us through about the hardware? Uh, sure. Let's uh, look at the front side. On the front side, uh, here, here you can see here on the presentation file, uh, this has a cover that covers the hard drive from pre prevent it from uh, collecting dust. And uh, we also have a, a lock mechanism there. So if you don't want your child to accidentally remove the hard drives, you can actually lock them, lock the front, front cover. Okay. And uh, for the 3.5 inch hard drive supported, and if you have a 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs, you can also use our supplied screws to secure them. And then there's an LED monitor, OLED screen, that shows you the current system status and also uh, the IP address of the NAS. So what happened with this is, is that uh, it's easily you can show, for example, when there's a hard drive failure or when there's a network cable disconnection, it will notify you through the uh, screen output. And then the next one will be the power button. So you know, just to power on the button or shut it down. And then the uh, light, the brightness adjustable LEDs. So you have a uh, drive LEDs, uh, status, uh, USB, and then port. So all these you can configure the brightness to be a certain level. For, for, for example, you can also schedule that, for example, to automatically dim the lights in, uh, when you are asleep. And the next will be the uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports. We, got, we give you two of them. That also works uh, with uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2. I will talk more about it later. And uh, on the front, there's also a USB 3.0, 3 uh, which is also now called named uh, 3.1 Gen 1. So it's a 5 gig connection. And uh, we also make it work with uh, the front copy button. So you can set up in, in our uh, software Back up, happy backup sync, you can set up to automatically back up the data, import data, or even synchronize the data with your external USB drives. Mm -hmm. And now let's take a look at uh, the, or, uh, the display, so OLED and the touch buttons. Uh, this one we have a capacitive uh, touch button, so it's, uh, the, user, the user experience is very similar to your mobile phones. So with these uh, touch buttons, it's very easy to be maintained and you don't have to worry about it. Unlike the traditional mechanical buttons, the dust will not be uh, will not go in there, okay? Because um, these uh, buttons are hidden below uh, the panel, okay? And then uh, we put down almost a one inch OLED display, so you can easily see uh, the information. And uh, the benefits of OLED is that uh, it gives you much wider viewing angle, so you don't have to stand right in front of the NAS <laughs> to see what's going on. And uh, thin panel, so it allows us to put it into a small device just like this and a four bay device and uh, it is very very uh, responsive so you can see the screen uh, the, the, the text re responsive is much better than the traditional uh, LEDs display and then uh, also it gives you over 60% power savings compared to the traditional uh, screen yeah that's a very important factor because we want to save some electricity with this machine yes uh -huh. and then let's take uh, uh, the, the back side uh, on the top left, there's a PCIe Gen 2 by 2 slot, and uh, we have uh, pre-installed it with a QM2 card that's, uh, uh, for uh, this device. And uh, this comes with, uh, it gives you two of the M.2 2280 SATA SSD slots, so you can purchase the more, for the more affordable M.2 SATA SSDs, and then install them on the, on the NAS for better performance. I'll get more to it later. Yeah, sure. And then besides the SATA, uh, M.2 SATA SD slots, there's also a 10 g base t one port there. We put it there for your high-speed 10 gigabit application. Okay, and then down there's the anti-theft casing, the uh, secure anti-theft uh, slot is already there. And then for audio output and input, we give you uh, two of the 3.5 millimeter uh, microphone input. Now remember that this works with those uh, dynamic microphones. So basically they are like uh, when you sing karaoke, those are dynamic uh, microphones. And uh, line out, so you can connect uh, uh, with the audio cable to your uh, existing amplifier to hear the, the audio. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, the next one would be the two of the 4K capable HDMI output. So you can use them for, uh, currently by default, it will be mirror output. And you can also set it up to be a, a desktop extension. 
So it's, it's very useful for if you are running a virtual machine like Windows virtual machine on the NAS, then you can use the extended desktop. So it greatly improve your work efficiency. And the uh, next one will be uh, the USB 3.0 ports, also um, 3.1 Gen 1. <laughs> uh, so you can connect uh, many of the USB peripherals with them, uh, such as uh, USB printer, USB uh, drives, and the UPS to keep your data safe. Mm. And like I mentioned before, USB keyboard and mouse. And it is also equipped with uh, dual gigabit LAN ports, so you can uh, greatly uh, easily achieve the 220 megabyte per second in both read and write. And then there's also uh, on the button left, there's also a power input, so it works with the adapter we included for you. And then let's take a look at the top right. Uh, we have also put in a speaker onto the device, you know, such a small but it comes with a built-in speaker. And the uh, speaker does is that uh, since QTS 4.3, it will tell you the system status. So for example, uh, if the backup job is uh, completed, then you will hear a uh, audio alert in English. Currently, we support English and uh, Chinese. So uh, instead of a traditional beep, beep, beep sound, then you don't have to uh, look for user manual and try to figure out what's going on. But uh, now, technology is advanced, so is our QNAP NAS. And you can just uh, hear the status with the beauty speaker and the audio alert. So for example, if you have a, if you have a hard drive failure, then cable disconnection also will be announced through the voice system. You know, that's very convenient because, you know, in, in the old times, we have to look through the motherboard manual to find out what does that mean for maybe three short beep and two long beep, and what does that mean? Yeah. And then now we have this beautiful audio warning, you just have to listen to it. Yeah, and if you want to if you want to hear your local language, you just uh, be sure to give us a feature request uh, and then follow our uh, Facebook, uh, you know, fans. Okay. Yeah, we will keep you updated <laughs> yes. if we have more language coming. Uh huh. And uh, what's more is that if you use this in, in the small in the store demo or in your room, you can actually use a speaker to play music through our music station as well to hear the, the audio. Okay. That's very convenient. Yeah. And uh, finally, there's a, a 12 centimeter fan. So it was a smart fan, so it works with uh, our uh, system to actively monitor the hard drive temperatures and the system temperature. And uh, we use a high quality ball bearing uh, fan, so it's guaranteed to last you for several years. Mm -hmm. All right, that's very cool. And Jason, you just mentioned this model comes with built-in QN2 cards, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can yeah. you Tell us more in detail. Uh, sure. So let me go to the next slide. Uh, this one, I think uh, some of you are already familiar with our QM2 cards because uh, they were released uh, maybe a few months ago. And uh, this 453 PD3 has its own uh, QM2 card. Uh, so, but uh, it's also compared with all the, all the existing QM2 card. And then I will explain the details. So here on the QN2 card, let's take a look from the top left hand side. So this one, it gives you two of the M.2 SATA SSDs and it's compatible with the M.2 2280, which is the most common form factor right now in, in M.2. And uh, it can support a SATA based version, so SATA SSD is the triple one. There's another type is M.2 PCIe, uh, they won't be compatible with this QM2 card. So if you don't use those, be sure to buy our another type of QN2. Okay? And uh, with this SSD slots, we also give you um, two independent M.2 SSD status LED. So what is the good benefit about this is that uh, if you have a drive failure with uh, other NAS, you only hear the beep sound and also the status light on the NAS front. Okay, but uh, you need to you may need to find a computer to log into the NAS web interface and try to figure out what, which drive is wrong. But uh, with the independent M.2 SSD light, they can easily check if anything is wrong with the M.2. And also our front our front hard drive also have uh, its independent LED lights. So you can quickly distinguish you which is in error condition. Okay. And then uh, besides that, uh, you, with the M.2 SSDs, just like other NAS, okay, you can use them as an SD cache. But uh, what's more is that QNAP allows you to use them as a high-speed storage volume. So you can configure them as a high-speed volume and also or use our QT or Tiering. I'll get to more about it later. Okay. 
And then uh, after the M.2 SSD stuff, then there was uh, one one port, 10 G best T port, so you can connect it with your existing uh, or future uh, network equipment like a 10 G switch. And uh, it it is also feature proof, so we support not just uh, 10 gigabit. It can also support upcoming 5 gig, 2.5 gig, and uh, the current uh, gigabit connections. Okay, so it's a uh, feature ready. And uh, we spent a lot of time designing the cooling module. Let me talk about the details. Uh, on the bottom left, you will see that uh, with the four screen screws. So actually, it can. We have considered the different. Uh, we call it Z height. The different thickness of the SSDs. Some of them may be single sided. Some of them may be double sided. So you have to consider all the different factors. And uh, with this uh, specially designed. Uh, and I would say carefully designed, then it can support all the various uh, M.2 SSDs in the market. Okay? And then uh, we also put a fan there that can also monitor the M.2 SSD temperatures to uh, make sure the SSDs don't get overheat. And what will happen if the SSD get heat, get uh, overheat? Then, first of all, for cell protection, the SSDs, they will, uh, fall, they will, become, they will go to the protection, cell protection mode. Uh, which means that uh, they will downgrade, they will degrade their performance to make it uh, much slower so it doesn't go much, the speed, uh, I mean the heat won't be so much high. Okay? But uh, this makes the usage of SSD cache becomes useless because it just becomes slow like a, a dog, I mean like a hard drive, okay? Like a hard drive. Okay. And uh, another bad thing about overheated SSD is that uh, it will, in the long term, if you keep in this condition, high heat condition in the long term, it will damage the life. You know? Because, I mean, by default, then you may get a three year war of warranty from the vendor. But uh, if you put that, it, because you're the human behavior, you know, your own behavior that caused that, it may, it may break after one year. And I think you already know that uh, if hard drive fail, then the data can be recovered. But if you use SSDs, then data will be very, very difficult, almost zero to be recovered. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, conclude the QM2 card on this uh, TS453 PT3. Alright, uh, Jason, I saw a little tiny line of words that the model comes with dedicated QM2. So this, with this QM2, can it be removed and be installed to another machine? Uh, with, uh, yeah, that's a good catch. With uh, this QM2, right now it is uh, specific for this uh, NAS. So if you try to remove it and install another QNAP NAS with a PCI slot, then uh, only the 10 gigabit interface will be recognized. The existing two, two of the M.2 SATA slots will not be recognized if you install this QM2 card on the other NAS. So you can say yes, this QM2 card with its special uh, model name is a specific design for this uh, TS453 BD3. Uh, so if you but anyway, I recommend to buy other Q QN2 cards if you want to use it with other NAS. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. So it's model specific. Yeah. So in the uh, previously I mentioned about Q tier, so I will have I prepare a simple slide here to tell you uh, what is Q tier and uh, why uh, QNAP push this because it's good for your data and for your performance. Uh, for we use a, let me use a four by three PD three as an example. Uh, the front, the 4 of the 3.5 inch hard drive, you can set up as a RAID, in the RAID file, to store your uh, large data, large files. And uh, on the 2 of the M.2 SSD, you can use set up as SSD RAID, a very high speed SSD RAID. Okay, I think right now M.2 SSD give you about five, 500 megabyte read and write, whereas traditional hard drive is only about uh, less than 200 megabyte per second. So you'll be benefited from the high speed SSDs. So with QNAP, QTIER, or tiering, uh, basically we monitor and we automatically arrange, detect, we detect your usage and the data usage and then arrange the pieces of data into the code and the hard areas. So you have to, ensure you will be guaranteed, uh, I mean your data, when you want to frequently access the data will also be uh, gathered in the first place. So let's uh, briefly talk about the uh, QTA technology. But uh, if you want to know more, we have uh, in the how to set up. We have more information on our website. Sure. So let's get back to the high-speed connectivity. How about their performances? Uh, yeah. First, let's uh, look at uh, this one has uh, two of the Thunderbolt three uh, ports. So you can basically, if you are on a, like a table, like uh, you know, in your workplace, you have uh, two computers. One is Mac, one is Windows. Each of them, you just put this uh, TS453 BS3 on this table, 
and then both of the two computers can completely access the data through Thunderbolt 3. And uh, here's our lab test with the RGR system test tool. Here you can see uh, with a rate performance about 500 megabyte per second and write is about 356 megabyte per second. So uh, these are all greatly much faster than the existing gigabit performance. So it can ensure your work is done quickly. Mm -hmm. So how about I have a Windows computer and I have installed 10 gigabit Ethernet cards? Yeah, if you have a computer with a 10 gigabit Tenji BST interface or if you have a Tenji switch, you can uh, connect this 10 gigabit NAS to that environment directly. And uh, based on our test, you can give you over 500 megabyte per second for read and write. So as you can see, performance is also quite good uh, for this, uh, this tiny device. And uh, 10 gigabit is a great application for the, for example, backup job, uh, hybrid backup sync, which will be the topic tomorrow. So we'll come to listen, uh, come to join and uh, watch how our product manager to explain more about it. Okay, And then the snapshot, which was a topic, uh, it's a hot topic lately, and then we just mentioned uh, a few weeks ago. So you can use it for high-speed backup through between the 10G NAS. And uh, if you are using, if you use this device in a virtualized environment, such as uh, VM or Citrix, or if you run your own VM with a 10 gigabit environment, it's also very good because of the high performance. Yeah, sure. So you also mentioned that uh, this model has two HDMI ports. So what can we do with this HDMI ports? Yeah, so this device comes with an Intel next generation HD graphics 500, which gives you speed up to 750 megahertz and uh, dual 4K Ultra HD output, HDMI output. And uh, this processor is also capable of uh, transcoding or playback. So with the transcoding, you can go up to two concurrent channels from the 2K, uh, 4K, sorry, 4K down to 1080p. So performance is actually uh, quite nice in this uh, product lane, range. And uh, also we include, uh, I mentioned, a Q button, which allows you uh, to set up some shortcuts to instantly do something. And I will have a, a separate uh, slide about Q button later. All right, cool. So we have this actual machine here, and is there anything you want to do to it? Yeah, let me try to tear it apart. <laughs> so let's uh, switch to the uh, live view here. Okay, so I have a TS453 BD3 here on the front and the rear side. So let me, uh, I'm gonna show you how you can install a M.2 SSD onto this device on this QM2 card. Sure. So first of all, you want to remove the front cover. Okay, let me just put it away. And then remove, make sure all the hard drive trays are removed. Sure. And then remove the screws on the back. Okay. Let's get started. Yeah. So there are three screws here on the back. Sorry. Okay, I think it's can you see better now, okay. So just maybe try to remove the screws. You remove, if you remove these three screws, you can just slide them open and you have uh, access to the NAS itself. Here is the QM2 card here. Okay. Now you want to remove the QM2 card to install the SSDs. Now there's a screw here that holds the QM2 card. Okay, so I want to remove that. Once you remove this only screw, then you can remove the QM2 cards. Okay, so now QM2 card is now removed. And, okay. Then I have the M.2 SSD here. Okay. Uh, we have uh, in the package content, we have a uh, supply some of these uh, black, like we call them rubber pads here. So you, the purpose of that is to, for you to install them uh, here, spread out evenly on the bottom of the M.2 SSDs. This is so when you install them there, you don't push them, so break the SSD. So it gives you some kind of uh, I think a cushion. Okay. So it's a, like a padding on the yes. bottom, so yes. you won't bend the yeah. SSD. Yes. And then we also include some here, thermal pads. So it, 
uh, creates uh, some uh, touch in the touch the area between the M.2 SD controller and also the uh, heatsink module here. Okay. So if you install this, now I try to remove the spring screws on the M.2. Okay. Let me take away this machine for a little. Okay. So you can do it here. Can you see that? Okay. Great. So I'm gonna use the this uh, screwdriver to remove the four spring screws here. you have loosened all the four different screws of okay, more okay now there's a cable uh, power cable that supplies the power to the fan you don't have you don't actually have to remove them remove it you can just uh, light them light here on the flat surface okay now you have uh, access to the two m.2 as it slides here slides here okay now you install the m.2 ssd just push it And use our encoded uh, screw to secure it. Okay. Now, because the M.2 SSD is uh, uh, uses smaller screw, so you want to find a small smaller screwdriver. Okay. Now I have uh, installed the M.2 SSD here, and now all I need to do is just uh, install the M.2 the heatsink back okay so I'm almost done here. So you can see it just took me a few minutes to um, remove all the screws and the covers and install M.2 SSD. So now it's been installed here. So just follow the steps back to put it in. And let's finish the uh, M.2 SSD installation. And now let's, so let me show you the next step, which is to uh, show you how to actually, after you install M.2 SSD and install a NAS, how you can use the uh, QTS interface to sure. do it. So let's switch to the uh, QTS. Okay, so this is the QTS user interface. F F interface. After you log into the QTS UI, you will go to our storage manager here. Okay, storage manager. And here you will see there's an option called an entry called cache acceleration. So if you click on create, you will see the two and two SDs. Well, I have another one that's already yeah, set up sure. here. So those two you can select and then set up the SD cache. So here uh, you can see we have a we support read only and the read write and you can set up a read zero or read one with those uh, SSDs. Mm -hmm. So this is the SD cache very easy to to set up. And if you want to use our Q tier then you just click on we have a, a little side note here if you click on it will go to take you to our web page to show you the Q tier explanation. And you click create a new pool. Now if it's the first time you can all already do it with the existing hard drive okay you never QT and then you can you never QT with the SSDs so there are two you can select so in the future if you put more hard drives into it then you can use use this okay so this concludes our live demo of the uh, TS453 BT3 let's go back to the next to the PowerPoint slide okay so this one just uh, show you how, sorry, uh, let me go back to uh, the mouse. There's some echo was uh, blocking the PowerPoint here. Okay. You click on the slide. Okay. 
So uh, this slide just show you what I just did. Basically, it's just a summary of uh, installing the M.SSDs and then show you how you can create an SSD cache and enable Qt here. And now the next one I'm gonna show you is how you can use a Thunderbolt 3 connection to quickly set up the, the, the NAS and your MacBook Pro. So let's uh, come uh, switch to my life here. I want to show you, uh, you want to get a Thunderbolt 3 cable, make sure, because Thunderbolt 3 uses a Type-C connection, so you want to make sure you get a, the right one. So here's the Thunderbolt 3 cable. Uh, from the different, how can you tell it from the different USB Type-C cable? Is that uh, you look for the Thunderbolt logo here. And the Thunderbolt logo. Uh, maybe you guys <laughs> can <laughs> see, but I thought it, it's a small yeah. lightning logo. Yeah, a small lightning logo. And uh, also all three means on about three, so it gives you the best performance. Okay, so I'm gonna connect to my uh, MacBook Pro, and we can switch to the QTS QTS view. Okay, so I'm, let me connect this cable. Okay, I have this cable just connected, and uh, it's it's gonna take a few seconds for the computer and QFinder Pro to detect. The Thunderbolt 3 NAS. Okay, now the pop-up window is now here to show to show you. Okay, uh, it has detected the Thunderbolt 3 connection. Thunderbolt device has been connected. Okay, see like the speaker will tell you what's yeah, you have heard it. <laughs> uh, here, just uh, first of all, you ask you if you want to create a Thunderbolt to Ethernet connection. So I will have a more information about it later, but you can use our QFinder Pro to set up this connection. So it allows your uh, Mac to connect to the existing 10 gigabit network easily. I'm um, okay, cancel right now. Okay, now uh, since we detect the NAS, it gives you the name of the device, the IP address, the Thunderbolt IP address, and uh, what you want to do, you want to open it, so I'm going to click yes. Now I type in the presentation of the NAS. Sure. Okay, now after I log into the NAS, you will ask uh, uh, how you want to mount it. So by default, there's an IP, something about IP here. Another here you will see is a LAN, local LAN IP. Okay, so I'm going to use something about, and you have a different protocols you can choose. By default, you use, we use the, we choose the SMB protocol because it, it is also uh, recommended by the Apple in the latest operating system. And if you are using different applications, you can select other protocols. I'll just leave it. And you can choose uh, if you want to put the multi folder in the fabric, so like a shortcut. Okay. So click OK. And here you will select uh, which folders, which, which shares on the NAS you want to mount it. I'll select multimedia. And now if you, I go, go to my Apple Finder, you will see the multimedia folder on the NAS is already uh, mounted here. So you can direct. Uh, now, from now on, you and your coworker can directly uh, edit the video files and pictures and do all the live editing uh, through the online uh, option. Yeah. Uh, that's very cool for collaboration. Yes. So let's go back to the PowerPoint slide. All right, cool. So, Jason, the 453 BD3 comes with a remote, right? Uh, yes. So what can the remote do? Uh, I have I have it right here actually. So yeah. what can you do? Uh, now I'm gonna talk about Q button. So we supply the Q button remote control uh, because uh, some this NAS has a HDMI interface and uh, we supply the also the via IR remote control. So many users may connect that to your existing monitor or TV even TV. Now there may be some uh, scenarios that. Uh, after you finish a very busy work day, when you go home, you just want to listen to some music. Okay, what happened right now is that always the uh, past uh, NAS and uh, our brain system is that you have to fight a computer and then turn it on and then connect to a Wi-Fi and then uh, find your music program and then listen to music. Well, I'm even more tired. <laughs> yeah, and also another scenario is that uh, if uh, on a Saturday night you are you and your family are watching a uh, favorite movie, okay, and suddenly uh, the IP camera, the surveillance system tells you uh, something is wrong, then you have to uh, log in to.
to the NAS again. Okay. Now with the Q button, it's very easy. You have you uh, spend some time to configure it in the future. All this can be simply uh, consolidated consolidated into just one step. All right, that's very cool. Let's see how it works. Yeah. So with the Q button, currently we support several apps. First one is the music station. So you can play your uh, customized playlist. You can play, pause, and do some more actions. I'll show you the interface later. And then, or you can. Or it can work with the surveillance station on our NAS. So it can instantly, uh, when you press a button, you will open up the surveillance station, the TV UI. So you can see the camera, live camera feed from one channel one, two, three, and four. You can configure which which button uh, will show you which camera channel. Okay. So this uh, means that when you're watching TV and then you install a QNAP V Mobile app on your phone, when you find a IP camera when our surveillance station and the IP camera detect there's an intrusion, okay, in the in your backyard, then your you know your V Mobile may may tell you something is wrong and you can easily press the remote button to uh, call up the surveillance video feed on your TV. Okay. Well, it's very convenient because everything you can do with just one button. Yeah. And, and saves a lot of time. Yes, and after that, uh, there's also a power uh, power off and a restart button. The start action you can use on the button, okay. And then uh, it's very easy to install uh, on some of the uh, Kinect NAS models. It's already uh, in the app center, and I'll tell you what models are supported later. And you s after you install that, open the Q button. You will, you will, the wizard will take a three or four steps to show you what to check. Uh, for example, your HDMI connection, and uh, set up the, some button actions, and you'll be done, okay. And here's a, a user interface. I will talk more about with our live demo later. So basically, it allows you to configure the different actions for each different button and the different apps. Okay. Sure. And uh, supported models is uh, currently it's available on most of the model on the models that already supply with the remote control. So you want to show show him the remote control, yeah, the yeah, black one with yeah, the button. black one. Mm -hmm. But if you have a uh, an older QNAP NAS model with this uh, gold colored uh, remote control, or if by default it doesn't give you one, then no problem. Uh, in the future, uh, we are still testing them, but the uh, Q button will be released for these models. So all you need to do is just to purchase the optional uh, remote control, then you will be able to use Q button with it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, as always, we still have demo for this feature, right? Yeah. So uh, let me switch. Let's switch to the uh, QTS view. I'm gonna show you the Q button user interface. Right here, you have the remote. Yeah. Uh, so here, Q button. I already made a shortcut here. So let me open it. So this is a Q button user interface here. So as you can see, it match. It provides a graphical user interface here. And uh, I click, uh, for example, uh, surveillance. Okay, I click, and then you can configure uh, which channel you want to to watch. Okay, then you can also start the channel for this action. Uh, action. And if you don't want, uh, if say if you want to temporarily disable the channel, the button action, you can also click on here. Okay, so now when you press the button, you won't uh, have a such uh, immediate action. Yeah, until you, you yeah until you enable it again okay for music uh, let's see here I have a configure to play uh, the music on the red button here so there are several actions you can use with the music station play stop next and previous okay and more will be added later so I have a pre uh, pre configure some why don't you just try the red button or which color what, the red, red one red color is all right here we go Play music. So see the the Nazi is trying to play play music. So hear the background background music. That's very cool. Yeah. So to stop it, just uh, press the green button. All right. Let me try the green button. Stop playing music. Okay. So the music has been stopped. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. So uh, it just uh, not uh, if you think about Cuba and just. Uh, this uh, remote remote uh, interaction, then you will be wrong. In the future, uh, we are actually also working with uh, the API documentation, so we will provide uh, a guide and interfaces so users can 
they can customize their own uh, devices and write their own code to connect to the NAS utilizing the QButton software feature and to do more things with the NAS for, automatic, uh, for automation. So in future, you can decide what to do with these buttons. You can customize the actions when pressing the button. Yeah, or if you have another device, you can also, different device, you can also configure it. If you can write code to connect them together. All right, very cool, mm -hmm. but, very, but also very practical function. Yeah, so let's go back to our PowerPoint slide. So Jason, uh, I know that uh, QNAP has been developing a lot of Thunderbolt analysis and uh, this one is also our new, pro new product. So why don't you just tell us what's so special about this Thunderbolt NAS, what can it do and what's the benefit of having it? Uh, sure. So this one gives you an overview of uh, the complete lineup of uh, QNAP and Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 2 supporting NAS. So uh, from the left, the the device we show today is TS453 BD3, the, the, the latest model, and also the most affordable one. And then on the top, there will be the 82 series. It comes with uh, the Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 3 varieties. So it depends on what you are looking for. And then uh, also the recommend models here, TVS 1582 TU, the recommend model. So uh, some application, one application is that uh, people, we see some studio installed on their uh, okay, studio car or trucks. And then so you can do a live video editing when they have to shoot some uh, live scenes. And then also the 2.5 inch 8 bay TBS AA2 ST3. This one, if you're looking for a small SSD, a small NAS with an SSD only 8 of length, then you can consider our TBS AA2 ST3. Very cool, we have a lot of them. So, what's the benefit of some creative professional that utilizes this soundable interface? Yeah. So Thunderbolt's uh, Thunderbolt interface, uh, for example, just like the picture shows, uh, it works with uh, both Mac and uh, now Windows with Thunderbolt 3. So they can easily co-work together on the project okay, with just on the same NAS. And uh, if you have an older Mac with a Thunderbolt 2, don't worry about it. Apple already has a solution. So you just go to Apple Store, whether it's online or a retail store, just look for their official Thunderbolt 2 connector. Okay, so it's a, like a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 converter. Then you can use it with your existing uh, Thunderbolt 2 devices. So it's still compatible, you don't worry about its compatibility issue. Yeah, correct. Right, cool. how, how about home users? Can home users also benefit from it? Yeah, uh, this slide shows you uh, if you are at home, you have a, a Mac or a, a MacBook. MacBook Pro, then it may come with just a few storage. Or if you have a Thunderbolt enabled DAS device, that like external drive, then you're also limited to just one or two hard drive capacity. If you go with an 8 bay, then it's expensive. But uh, with this uh, TS453 B3, it gives you four hard drive uh, cap uh, capacity. So you can easily from jump from three terabyte to 30, 30 terabyte. So it gives you 10 times more storage capacity, you know, with the Thunderbolt 3 performance. And uh, we also give you RAID protection, so you can configure RAID 5, RAID 6 to uh, protect your data. And uh, also you can enable it for your uh, cloud access. So with K my Kinect Cloud, you can easily access the, your work project uh, from the remote outside your office or your home. And actually the machine looks pretty good, the design are pretty sleek, so it won't be a problem if you put it on your desk for work. Yeah, yeah, and also uh, very quiet. Yeah, sure. So, how can we import those data into our NAS? The, the, do we have any special applications or any special connections? Uh, yeah, with uh, Thunderbolt 3, uh, also because it has a USB Type-C uh, interface, it also supports the USB 3.1 Gen 2. So basically, which means, uh, see on the top, uh, you, can install, you can connect a USB-C uh, external SSD, or if you can buy a Thunderbolt uh, 3 to I mean, you can buy a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C, the USB-C to USB-A converter, so to work with your older uh, external hard drives. So you can easily uh, uh, back up the data from external drive. Or if you have a camera that shoots a very high quality photos and videos, you can also, with a USB-C card reader, you can also quickly import the pictures and the videos from the memory card to the NAS directly with our Happy Backup Sync software. All right, cool. And there's another feature you previously mentioned that called T2E technology. Why is that? Okay, 
uh, Thunderbolt to Ethernet with a short, short name for T2E technology because uh, with uh, almost all the Mac devices they do not have 10 gigabit capability they will just rely on Thunderbolt for high speed connection but what if uh, those Mac users or computers they want to uh, access your existing 10 gigabit environment for example you want to access a, a server that's hosting a 10 gigabit uh, network environment then traditionally you have to purchase uh, a, a, another uh, optional device it's called Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit converter and they can easily cost you 500 US dollars wow well, that's expensive yes but uh, with the uh, QNAV Thunderbolt to Ethernet technology because this device will also give you one one port of 10 gigabit interface so with our uh, software based uh, which is switch it actually allows your Mac computer to connect to the 10 gigabit network connect that's already connect to the, the NAS itself so we bridge them together so you can easily uh, utilize in the Thunderbolt and the 10 gigabit high speed uh, data transfer the, this this channel to easily transfer your data so somehow the model just acts like a switch or something that connects the 10 g network with the Mac computer yes yeah. mm -hmm. cool so you can save a lot of money so you say the the converter is about 500 US dollars. Yeah, oh, 500 to 600 US dollars. That's expensive. <laughs> yes. So, um, with all these functionalities and they look very promising, do we have any actual case studies or our actual customers are really using them and what's the result of it? Yeah. Uh, actually, our marketing has put a lot of the case studies of Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 2. Uh, real cases uh, and then uh, people how they use those NAS in the environment on our website and here are just some of the examples so these are uh, some examples of the photographers for example uh, the, on the left uh, there's a French photographer Falco he, he tried to uh, use something about three with a big one big device with his uh, existing uh, project where it uh, have really pr uh, increased his productivity and then uh, in the middle uh, this guy Mal Malcolm yeah, Martin, he uh, he also used them uh, to store uh, his uh, many pictures he took in uh, Africa, mm -hmm. the wildlife, okay? And then uh, the, the top right, the, the rightmost uh, guy, Nick, he uh, works for National, Ge National Ge Geography. Yeah, Geography, National yeah. Geography. Yes, uh, so he also uh, took a lot of, takes, uh, he also takes a lot of pictures to uh, work and then store them on the NAS. Mm -hmm. So here's uh, some workflow. I will show you how they actually use the NAS. So when they, because uh, this device is, uh, this one is slow, so it's very easy to be carried around, very light. And if you install SSD, it's even lighter, okay? Yeah, sure. So you can easily carry them with you in your outdoor uh, projects. So after you shoot them, you can easily import your data to the NAS. And then later, uh, when you're back in the office, or even through a 4G connection or Wi-Fi, you can actually uh, quickly back up the data from this smaller NAS to a bigger NAS and then so the people in your office they can uh, work on the same item to, uh, collaboratively. So it acts like a small hub in the field and uh, when you get back to your office or any place with internet you can quickly sync all this data back to your main office or headquarters or studios. Yes. Yeah. So uh, let's with a uh, photo uh, application use case. What about the uh, videos? So in this year, the Shell Eco Marathon uh, happened in the US, and uh, here you can see it's actually uh, we actually have a video also on the, our official YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more, welcome to uh, watch the video later. Uh, basically, it uses a lot of uh, 4K high definition cameras, uh, even the one on the ground and also on the drone. Okay, so. Uh, we have many editors working on this uh, footage, uh, editing and collaborating together, and all stored on the QNAM and Thunderbolt NAS. Okay. And then, so the next slide will show how they actually use the NAS. For here in uh, Detroit, uh, you have a high speed uh, footage, and you're taking a high speed uh, event, live event, with uh, your 4K resolution, 4K video uh, camcorder. And uh, then you import that into, ingest them into the NAS. After that, uh, you have uh, some Mac computers there working with the NAS for a first raw video editing. And after that, through our backup software, the like RT Real Time Remote Application, instantly uh, back up into the remote office, the big one that like I mentioned earlier. It's very similar to the photo usage backup remote one. And in the remote office, there are even more workers, more co workers, they can 
uh, concurrently work on the same project because uh, the bigger the bigger NAS has a much more powerful processor and more memory, so it can handle more concurrent connections. That's why uh, we recommend if you have many many users, uh, say for example over twenty or thirty, uh, be sure to choose our uh, bigger Thunderbolt three and Thunderbolt two enabled devices. So that gives you an overview of how the uh, professional photographers and the video makers they take the they use our Thunderbolt three and Thunderbolt two NAS. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, Jason. Thank you for all this in-depth description mm -hmm. and uh, help with our product. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much concludes our presentation today. And as Jason mentioned earlier, tomorrow we'll be talking about Hybrid Backup Sync, our backup program that just got got out of beta. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.